Fit and fab has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what does fit and fab really mean, especially to us women? Well, Maggie, it's very, very simple. Fit and fab is about feeling fantastic, fabulous, even fantabulous, both on the inside and out. And guess what, ladies? It's not at all hard to be a fit and fabulous female. Trust us. I'm Tereli Cara. And I am Maggie Wilson. And this is Fit and Fab, your ultimate guide to being a better you. is really jam-packed because we've got a lot of stuff on the show that will truly make you guys fear. From indoor wall climbing to body language to refreshing summer recipes and home food skin remedies. There, I can't wait to get started. Me neither. So let's start off with a little something that I tried out recently. Mm -hmm. Wall climbing. Wall climbing? Wait a minute. Aren't you afraid of heights? Yeah, I am. Still am. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that go? Well, the power up boys were really mm -hmm. very nice. They distracted me totally. They mm -hmm. made me feel at ease. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having so much fun and getting myself a total body workout. Good job. Check this out. Wall climbing is quickly becoming one of the most popular pastimes here in the Philippines for both men and women. Probably because of the extreme appeal, yung makit ka ng pader and all that stuff. And also the basic human aspiration to climb and reach new heights. Some people do it for fun, some for thrill-seeking, and some to tone their muscles and their bodies. But ako, I'm going to try it out today just of pure curiosity. And I hope you enjoy as I try out wall climbing as a sport. Well, wall climbing, it's a gymnastic approach towards rock climbing. Mm -hmm. So when you say wall climbing, it's a um, safe practice indoors. Gymnastic approach meaning na marami kang techniques na ina-apply. And girls, if you're looking for a full body workout after a day at work or school, then wall climbing is just for you. Pag continues ka ng climb, more on the forearm siya. And then after nun, yung, yung bicep, deltoid, yung, yung likod. Pero ang pinaka-importante actually is yung core, yung, yung abs. Kasi marami kasing uh, movements na nasa gitna lahat. If you think you're going to have huge forearms and shoulders if you wall climb regularly, think again. Wall climbing will tone your muscles and give it more definition, not make you bulk up. Depends on what you do. Depends on how frequent you climb. Most of the, our girls, para sila yung mga weekend warriors, so they climb for recreation. Yan. And also, kung toning man siya, upper body, Medyo magkakaroon lang ng konting cuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But not technically buff, kasi toning siya. Climbing not only allows you to flex your physical muscles, but your mental muscles as well. Ang talaban mo sarili mo, na once you finished a certain route, after noon, what's next? Pagkatapos mo ng next route, nasirapan ka, ano yung nangyari? Marami siyang set of questions sa kailangan mo sagutin. Wall climbing is also an incredibly social activity. Meron ka dapat climbing body. Uh -huh. Your climbing body's job is to pull the rope up whenever you goes up, whenever the climber goes up, and lower you down kung ayaw mo nang uh, mag-climb or narating mo na yung pinakataas. Your climbing buddy will actually motivate you, cheer you on, and ensure your safety. That's what friends are for, diba? So what do you need to climb? Any apparel any clothing that don't hinder movement. All right. Um, for guys, susot lang kami ng shorts. Mm -hmm. For girls, pero parang mga leggings. Usually, we suggest jogging pants. So seat harness, you wear it like a short. Oh. Well, for example, this is the belt. Okay. And this goes in front. Dito kiniklip kasi yung safety mo. Mm -hmm. Rock shoes. So bakit may kailangan pang i-rent ang rock shoes? Kasi ang rock shoes, ang design niya, cambered siya. Baka ganun. Kasi ang principle niya, yung paa mo, kaganyan siya sa rock shoes. Okay. So once na umapak ka, ang pinangapak lang kasi is itong edge ng sapatos. Ito naman, 
option din ng mga climbers to. Mm. To use yeah. chalk. Meron kasi mga tao na pasmado. Mm. Mga iba naman, gusto nila mag-chalk para additional friction. Oh, or medyo astig lang yung dating mo. Yes. Chalk-chalk-chalk Ito yung ating belay device. Okay. Ito, so, sa drawing, ito kalagay. Ito yung climber and this one is the belayer. Ah, okay. Kaya ko yung nalaglag na climber. Wala. Ang belayer, actually, siya yung... Uh, Whenever the climber goes up, siya yung humihila ng tali. Mm, okay. So if ever na malaglag siya, masalo nung system, mm -hmm. system meaning this one, okay. yung climber. This one is naman is the carabiner. So, sa carabiner, yung mga rope, may nakatouch na carabiner, okay. yung carabiner ngayon, kiklip mo sa'yo. Ah, okay. Um, what about guts? Gano'ng kataas yan? Yung Ito, 48 feet. 48 feet? Paano kung takot ka sa heights? Ah, uh, okay lang. Siguro sa start, kung takot ka lang sa heights, uh -huh. mag-start ka sa beginner wall. Okay. Tapos dahan-dahan tatanggalin yung fear of heights mo. Okay. Hanggang sa maging komportable ka na, tsaka ka nalilipat sa mga moderate advanced walls. 48 feet? I guess that's not so bad. And if these women have been doing it for years without any mishaps and near-death experiences, I can climb that wall too. Can you climb, remember to... Inhale, exhale, mm. and then don't pull with your arms, just push with your legs. First and foremost, just have fun, mm -hmm. just, and remember just to leave worries behind, and as you climb, you don't forget to smile, and that will help you along the way. Got it. It's time for me to hit the wall. Siyempre, dito muna ako sa beginner's wall. Finally, I'm gonna try it. Follow me! Yeah, yeah start pa lang. Easy pa siya. Of course, I remember everything that uh, Ms. Bambi said. Smile! I don't I can do it. I can just like hang here and smile forever. Push with your legs today. Baba eh. So pag hindi mo sa gitna, shocks, mataas na siya. Totoo na to. Pero pag tumingala ka, makita mo na konti na lang. Yung last few, ano, last few grips mo, parang very encouraging na siya eh. Paubos na siya ng paubos eh. I've gone a long way up and there's no more turning back. This is so not glamorous, but my God, I feel I'm sweating so much. <sighs> if only for that, it's worth it. <sighs> My arms are sore halfway through the climb. I guess I didn't use my legs enough in the beginning. I had a problem um, uh, trusting my legs that it would be able to push me up. Kasi feeling ko weak na yung arms ko kasi lagi ka nakataas ng kamay. So kaya kong abutin, ang tanong is kaya ko bang itaas yung sarili ko? <sighs> Konti na lang! Konti na lang! Yeah, I can delude myself and tell myself na konti na lang, pero parang ang dami pa. Ah! Gumagalaw siya! Gumagalaw yung isang yun. Sabi kasi rin sa akin ni Kuya Ipe earlier na yung mga may mark ng tape, don't touch it because medyo maluwang siya. Tapos may isang malaking-malaking pig, ang dami-dami yung tape. So parang ko, shocks! Ba't di ba natanggalin to? So what to turn up, talagang mabuhay siya. And merong iba na wala naman tape, pero pag tapak mo, parang gumagano. So parang papasigaw talaga ako dun. Yeah! <laughs> yes! Finally! I've never been so happy to not see any more pegs. It means it's over. It's finished. Malamig! <laughs> For some reason, malamig siya sa taas. And then, it's really very fulfilling. Parang, although there is no physical prize up there, it's really the thing na shocks na gawa ko siya. Parang, ubus na yung pegs! Yay! Finish na, finish na. Indoor wall climbing is a fun sport because it gives you a thrill. The thrill of reaching the top all on your own. The climbing walls may be daunting at first, but with the right motivation and attitude, that impossible is nothing. Siguro kailangan mo lang dalhin is your climbing body and your spirit to climb. Kailangan determined ka lang na kung papasok sa isang sport, either bago ka dyan o hindi. Gagawin mo't gagawin mo siya. And my sore arms are proof that this sport lives up to its fitness hype. 
indoor wall climbing is truly everything that it promises to be and more. Not only do you get a total body workout, but you also get a confidence workout as it is truly, truly feeding your ego once you are able to reach the top and finish the entire course. I would really recommend this for the woman who is on the go and set to achieve new heights. Yay, so start the time. I'm so excited. Look, Ma, I can go. You know what, Tara? It is just so hot nowadays. I feel like I can eat a gallon of ice cream or anything that's cold. I totally agree with you. And short of actually munching on ice cubes, mm -hmm. I have been on the lookout for the perfect summer recipe. The type of food that will keep you refreshed and cool all throughout the summer. And guess what? I have succeeded. I have found them at Cafe Isabel. Interesting. So let's watch Tara and Chef Lawrence prepare some cool summer treats. Summer food is all about freshness, ease, and speed because this is the season to enjoy the freshest produce and to eat them outdoors. But summer food is really all about eating to feel light, refreshed, and rejuvenated. Let's beat the heat with the right foods, drinks, and desserts that Chef Lawrence will prepare for us. Yay, so start the time. I'm so excited. So, what do we have to do this afternoon? Well, our first dish is the shrimp and mango salad. Summer is the perfect season to enjoy fresh seafood and mangoes. And this is definitely the recipe to do just that. For our first dish, we need six pieces of large-sized shrimps or prawns, one sliced ripe mango, one finely chopped green mango, one stem of cilantro leaves chopped into pieces, one sliced bell pepper, three tablespoons of fish sauce or patis, two tablespoons of white sugar, calamansi, and one cup of boiled glass rice noodle or sotanghon. First, we prepare our shrimps or prawns. We have to... Those are prawns? Yeah, for this, we used prawns. So, we have to clean it first, take the head off, skin off, but we will leave the tail. Oh, we have to leave the tail for... What, what for? Just for aesthetics. Grill the shrimps or prawns until they become golden brown. Then cook the glass rice noodles in boiling water. After a minute or so, put the noodles in cold water to avoid overcooking them and set them aside. With the shrimp and the noodles done, all we need to do now is mix all the ingredients together. Yay! <laughs> very easy, very simple. Look, Ma, I can go. This salad is a perfect balance of sweet, tasty, and sour. And because it doesn't use any heavy oils, light na light talaga siya sa tummy. Mmm, excited na ako for the taste test. Okay, so di ba, friends, in less than 15 minutes, kaya mong gumawa ng napakasarap at napakadaling prawn and mango salad. O di ba, no-brainer for those of us who don't really know how to cook. Visually, also very summer, siya, very festive, very happy ang colors. Yeah. Green, red, the yellow. So it goes for the summer talaga. So uh, this is the best part, the tasting part. Yay! So do the honors. Mm, very good. And because it's so easy to prepare, the shrimp and mango salad is a perfect dish for summer pool and garden parties. Tuna is rich in many different vitamins, like vitamins B1 and B6, magnesium, and potassium. It is also very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. But did you know that tuna is actually one of your best protections from sunburn? Interesting, no? That is why tuna is number one on our list of summer foods this season. Tama ba, Chef? Yes, correct. Tama ang mga pinagsasabi ko about tuna, yes. So what exactly is it about tuna that helps protect us from sunburn? Or sun, yeah, sunburn. The, the composition of omega 3s, mm -hmm. uh, which the tuna, tuna meat contains. So, for our third summer food recipe, we're combining tuna with one of the best tropical fruits to eat this season the pineapple for a refreshing tuna and pineapple sandwich. We'll need a can of tuna, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, one stalk of chopped celery, one tablespoon of pickle relish. 
5 slices of fresh pineapple, 6 slices of cucumber, 4 slices of tomatoes, 4 slices of wheat bread, 2 leaves of lettuce, 1 teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. Our next recipe can be done in less than 15 minutes. Perfect for when you're ready to head to the beach. Yay, let's assemble our game. Okay, so bowl natin. Preparing a good sandwich is so easy. Just mix the ingredients. The tuna, mayonnaise, pickle relish, celery, pineapple tidbits, cayenne pepper, and the salt and pepper in a bowl. For texture and flavor, let's first grill our wheat bread. Then spread all the mixed ingredients on the wheat bread and top it off with tomato, cucumber, pineapple, and lettuce. Voila! An instant summer sandwich! Yay! My most favorite part! Store these healthy sandwiches in sandwich bags, and you've got the perfect road trip snack. Hungry for more cool summer treats? You'll have to stay tuned! So Chef Lawrence and I have already whipped up a savory summer salad and an easy tuna and pineapple sandwich. What else is on our summer plate? Okay, so fruits naman kaya tayo, Chef. Kasi what is summer without fruits, diba? Correct. What better way to enjoy nature's bounty than a totally pampalamig summer fruit salad with lemongrass syrup? For the syrup, prepare two slices of medium-sized ginger, one cup of white sugar, two stems of lemongrass, and one cup of water. As for the salad itself, Go crazy with the in-season fruits like one medium-sized melon cut into cubes, two peeled oranges, two cubed red apples, 250 grams of grapes, two cubed pears, and one cup of white sugar. Let's start with the syrup. Boil one cup of water, then add the sugar and the ginger. Pound the stem of the lemongrass to excrete the oils, then add it to boil. We prepared our syrup earlier. So, yung mixing part na. So, do the honors again. Then, I'll help you pour uh, our, our ginger and lemongrass infused syrup. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing no? yung lasa niya. It is really, really good if it's really, really cool. Serve this fruity dessert chilled. It'll definitely cool and refresh you in minutes. Great as an after-dinner treat during hot summer nights. Okay, so after coming up with our sandwich, with our salad, and with our fruit dessert, this time, Shepard, we have to come up with our drinks. So, Shepard, yes. summer, summer is the season of how na how malaki. So, Chef, ano bang masarap yung summer? Well, for, for our uh, refreshing drink, mm -hmm. I prepared a very simple drink, which is uh, a green tea okay. with uh, milk and crushed ice. Okay. With one liter water, steep four green tea bags. Add one part condensed milk and one part evaporated milk to the liquid. To complete the drink, add crushed ice. Green tea is rich in antioxidants, and coupled with the ice, this is definitely a refreshing way to relieve your body from the summer heat. Cheers! Mm. Wow! It's that easy! So let's enjoy while the sun is up with summer's food that will certainly refresh us inside and out. We can get a message across without even saying a word. Because the level of uh, our nonverbal communication is about 55% of the overall communication capacity of a human being. So, 
Okay, what is body language? Well, Mags, if I'm not mistaken, body language is a form of nonverbal communication. That's right. It is very important for us to learn how to communicate using our bodies, which is why I turn to the experts to learn the art of proper body language. Hey, girls. Thinking of how you can make a good impression at a job interview? Or simply trying to let your boss know you can handle your job well without saying a word? Well, we're here to help you send the right signals. Body language is a nonverbal way of communication through postures and gestures. It also involves our expressions, behavior and movements that allow others to read into our personalities and thoughts. I'm a salesperson, so I conduct business a lot of times. And I can all already see if the person I'm talking to is against what I'm saying or is with me. So if he's against me, then I try to soften a little bit. It's much deeper than in actual talking. It would really make you feel the true feelings. Because no? you can mask a lot of things with words. You can be able Body language is used to define other forms of communication, so it really falls under that category. However, sometimes it's being used uh, in clinical psychology to determine if there are other um, things happening inside the person. Surprisingly, most of what we say is nonverbal. Because the level of uh, our nonverbal communication is about 55% of the overall communication capacity of a human being. In fact, we can get a message across without even saying a word. Eye contact or a simple pat on the shoulder can go a long way and mean different things to different people. But how can everyday body language send the wrong signal? The arm cross, something we all do any given day. Harmless, right? Think again. This everyday action can give off the wrong impression. It can be read uh, either as a person putting up a barrier in conversation or in discussion or in a meeting. The arm cross gives off the impression that you don't want to be bothered or disturbed. So if you want the opposite reaction, keep those arms to the side. Nail biting is a nasty habit. What's even nastier is that it gives off the wrong signals to people. Some people, their, their mind is running a mile a minute, and so they need to control that and they'll use the, the hand. But it's more of nervousness. Teething on your nails make other people think you're anxious, worried, and stressed, even if you're not. So try to avoid it by keeping your hands busy. Or by chewing a piece of gum. Problems with self-esteem? Fret not! You can stride your way up to being confident through a little walk exercise. To project that confidence, strengthen your body and imagine a straight line. Walk as if you're in a catwalk and not in a straight line. Too brisk a walk, but that's very short stride. Um, um, they're not comfortable in their own body. They're not comfortable with their own skin. Did you know that the words you use only have a 7% impact on your communication? Your tone of voice amounts to another 38%. And your nonverbal body language impacts to a whopping 55% on the impact of the message that you are trying to communicate. So if you're too shy to get to know someone, use your body and be Miss Friendship. First, establish your connection. Experts say you can mirror how the other person sits or talks. This way you can easily build rapport and leave a good impression. Both strangers feel safe. It becomes you're establishing a safe environment. And if there's a friend confiding a serious problem, you can be the best bud she'll ever have if you listen to her. Gain her trust by turning your hand palm up, not when she speaks to let her know that the conversation is about her. If you don't know where to put those idle hands when talking to someone, here's something that can help you. Is it possible to get too casual when talking to someone? Putting both hands in your pockets may be okay when chatting with a friend or a colleague, but be careful when speaking to your superiors. This may imply that you do not respect authority. Did you know that our body language can also have a bad effect on our jobs? For example, you're in a meeting, Tapping your fingers could mean a lot of things. Boredom, irritation, um, 
let me get out of here, my time is being wasted, <laughs> you know, I don't belong here, or um, it's also a way of calling attention. So if you're feeling bored or eagerly waiting for your turn to speak, be discreet. Ask your boss for a 10 to 15 minute break to release that boredom. You want to know the secret of landing that job you've been dreaming of? Here's how. Now let's say you're all set for the big interview. Before you speak, the rest of your body has already spoken volumes. So do not rest your head in hand with your eyes downcast while waiting for your name to be called. This could mean that you are not interested in the job. The right thing to do? Sit properly and keep yourself busy. Try to look for something to read while waiting. You are saying, I am with you. I, I can empathize with you. I am uh, reading you. I can read your, uh, your mind. I am agreeing with you, in other words. Wow, the person across the desk by looking confident and eager to get the job. A smile can bring out the best in your day. Remember, you need 43 muscles to frown, but only 17 to smile. So not only is it a lot easier to show those pearly whites, it's a great way to make yourself stand out while improving our health, lowering our stress levels and making us look younger. Your body language may be your secret to landing a good career, so be conscious, girls. Make sure you're sending the right signals. Going beyond 625 milligrams of caffeine a day increases your health risks. Palpitation, even anxiety, insomnia, so you, you don't really get to sleep very well. I don't know about you, Maggie, but I love starting my day with a great cup of coffee. Now who doesn't? But like all things we love, coffee must be taken by moderation. Because, let's face it, too much caffeine isn't so great for your body. So for all you closet caffeine addicts out there, here's how you can curb your extreme coffee cravings. Let's face it, if we want to get revved up for the whole day, a cup of coffee or two in the morning will surely get us on the go. It is because of a substance called caffeine that actively works in our body, stimulating our central nervous system and elevating blood glucose, giving us a much needed energy boost. Coffee can really enhance our mood, make us happy. It can enhance athletic performance. Again, there are studies to support that coffee also can reduce the incidence of liver cancer. Every cup of coffee has approximately 125 milligrams of caffeine. According to experts, drinking two to three cups of coffee a day is considered moderate and does not have significant health risks for adults. But going beyond 625 milligrams of caffeine a day increases your health risks palpitation, even anxiety, insomnia, so you, you don't really get to sleep very well. Take the case of Julius Fabregas, father of four. For more than two decades, he was enslaved to this drug called caffeine. He used to drink eight to ten cups of coffee a day. You know, in the morning, you take a cup of coffee and, you know, parang it gets you stimulated right away. And sometimes when you're working through the night, it definitely helps you. While coffee seemed beneficial to his lifestyle, he cannot discount the adverse effects of his extreme coffee consumption. There were times when I, yeah, I would be depressed, kind of, or not, not naman depressed, more lowly of spirit. You just don't want to do anything. I think that's what I did, and that's what, that's what coffee does too, is it alters your rest patterns, because your, your, your body is not completely at rest, so even while you're resting, you're not getting a maximum rest. And it was only this year that he decided to quit his addiction. Now I take it for leisure. You know, I'll take it for leisure maybe two or three times a week. And so I did that gradually over years, but I never really would remove myself completely. If you happen to be a coffee junkie and want to draw away from it, here are some tips on how to quit. Don't try quitting coffee abruptly. Do it gradually. Initially, reduce your intake by half. Then after a couple of days, chop it to half once more. And keep doing that till you feel you don't need coffee anymore. We do not want to have the withdrawal symptoms. And the withdrawal symptoms can be 
experiencing headaches, fatigue, irritability. Opt for a healthy fruit juice every morning. This will give you a feeling of having had a liquid in the morning so you don't miss your coffee and will also boost up your sugar level. Switch from coffee to herbal tea or how about a hot lemon, ginger or calamansi juice? Here, you still get to enjoy a warm beverage without the negative side effects. Probably we could look into um, teas or maybe ginger, but it should always give you the same enjoyment, mouth enjoyment or mouth feel, or else it will not be a good substitute for coffee. Lastly, drink plenty of water. Four liters of water daily would do you good and will keep you away from fatigue and dehydration. That's it. Just follow these easy tips and you'll find yourself free from your coffee addiction. Happy quitting! So Max, in an average, normal day, mm -hmm. how often do you change your shoes? Oh God, um, with my busy schedule, I'd say about three to four times a day. Yeah, I think I'm around that same number too. But I have a question. You know, Mugs, do you have Kalyu? Yeah, actually I do. <laughs> I have Kalyu. Pretty, but it's normal. I mean, we always change our shoes with our busy schedule from heels to sneakers to flats. It's pretty normal. Yeah, you name it, we wear it. Exactly. <laughs> so the question is, how do we get rid of our Kalyu? And that burning question we asked our experts in our Fit and Fat Q&A. Our poor feet. Every day we subject them to varying degrees of abuse. Whether it's wearing too tight shoes, really uncomfortable stilettos, or walking around the mall for hours, our feet are often neglected. And when corns, calluses, blisters, and cracked heels start to appear, you know that your feet are signaling an SOS. Cracked heels are referred to as fissures or hard growth of skin found on the soles of the feet. They're usually accompanied by dry skin. Cracked heels is caused usually by prolonged standing or walking. Um, it is also caused when uh, the footwear isn't so comfortable. So when they're ill-fitted, they're too tight or too loose, pwedeng magkaroon din ng cracked heels. Common din yan dun sa mga patients na nagsusuot ng mga slingback na, na shoes. Yikes! So who'd want a cracked heel? So what's the right way of treating them? Cracked heels are best treated if they are moisturized. So, in apply a moisturizer para ma treat yung dryness. Also, uh, maganda kung yung footwear mo ay comfortable rin. One that is neither too loose nor too tight. So, if you have a cracked heel problem, head over to your local pharmacy or beauty store. There are heaps of products there that can help you get rid of cracked heels. First would be the rough skin remover. So it exfoliates the dry skin on the feet. And then after that, we can moisturize the feet with softening lotion. Another common foot problem are blisters. Blisters, as with the cracked heels, is common when the shoes are ill-fitted. It occurs also if um, the patient is sensitive to some materials used in the shoe, like leather maybe or suede. Um, common din yan, pag medyo bago yung shoe, tapos na abrade yung skin against it, yan, nagkakaroon ng blisters. It is common in people who are engaged in sports, um, especially those, or yeah, exactly, runners, those who hike, those who, again, are pro to prolonged standing or walking or running. To prevent that, again, uh, a comfortable or comfortably fitted shoe is essential. Meron yan either nilalagay dun sa, sa back, meron nilalagay sa heel, or dun sa balls ng feet para ma-prevent yung mga uh, yung blistering. Feet are supposed to be kept as dry as possible. So whenever necessary, the socks should be changed. Um, the, the toes, especially the ones in between, they should be dried. Foot powders may be applied para yun ang mag-absorb sa sweat. But if you're prone to blisters, don't deal with them the wrong way. Hindi siya pwedeng self treat or puncture on your own kahit na ang needle mo ay pinaraan mo sa flame. Kasi hindi yun guarantee na sterile na. Ang better na gawin, um, pwedeng maglagay ng uh, salt and water compress dyan. Meaning, in one liter of boiled water, pwedeng maglagay ng one tablespoon of rock salt. Tapos, iwiwet ang sponge, tapos i-apply sa area na, na kung saan may blister. 
There are also a number of products in the market that can help you with treating them. Kinakabit siya sa shoes or sa skin para hindi magform ang blisters. And then we also have the gel type for the uh, blisters para hindi siya magrub dun sa shoes. And yun din conditions uh, na pinaform ng blister plaster na yun, nag-help siya para mag-heal ka agad yung blisters. See how easy it is to be blister-free? Mga corns, they are smaller. Also, meron siyang parang hard na center surrounded by skin that is inflamed. Parang maga yung balat na nakapaligid. They occur in those areas that do not bear any weight. Meaning, yan yung sa ibabaw ng toes or dun sa gilid. Ang callus naman, it is actually a rough, thickened patch of skin. Yaan, it occurs kung saan may pressure. So, meaning sa soles yan, usually the balls or the heels. How to treat them? To prevent them, again, you know, well-fitted, comfortable shoes are a must. Um, it is said that if you try on a shoe and you can't move your toes, it means it's too tight. So you shouldn't be buying that at all. Or if you really, if you really should purchase the shoe, pwede siyang stretch ngayon. Merong mga shops na nag-offer ng ganong services para komportable siya all around. Or you can wear some cushioning pads and insoles that you can easily find in the market. We have air pillow insoles, so buong pa yung kinokushion niya, but. We also have options para dun sa mga tao na gusto lang makushon yung heel nila or yung balls ng foot. My best bit of advice, just take good care of your feet. See ladies, looking good and feeling fantastic has never been this easy. And if you have any questions about how to become more fit and fab, do write to us at fitandfab at gmanetwork.com. We would love to hear from you. Once again, I am Maggie Wilson. And I'm Tara Caro. See you next week on Fit and Fab! fab.